Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel. If you have a sweet tooth or you find it difficult to keep yourself from overeating sweet foods, I have something to tell you about this week that could be really useful. But first, if you need a break from your hot, crowded gym, check out Elevated Fitness. They let you stream workouts anywhere, anytime with no equipment required. Their low intensity interval training workouts are fun, fast, and they're designed to speed up your metabolism, help you sleep better, and give you more energy. You can subscribe at www.elevatedfitness.com. That's E-L-E-V, the number eight, dfitness.com and get your first month free today by entering the promo code DIVA at checkout. Sweet Defeat is a new product that claims to lessen your desire and therefore your consumption of sweets. But does it work? Well, I reviewed the science behind this interesting product and also put it to the test and I have a full report for you today. The active ingredient in Sweet Defeat is an herb called Gymnema Sylvester. This herb has been used for centuries in traditional medicine, mostly as a treatment for diabetes. In fact, the Hindi name for this herb translates to destroyer of sugar. Modern pharmacological research seems to support this traditional wisdom. Compounds extracted from gymnema have been shown to reduce the absorption of sugar from the intestinal tract and also to boost insulin production, and all of that could help lower your blood sugar. In fact, animal testing confirms that gymnema does reduce blood glucose levels. Lab rats who are given gymnema extracts also end up eating less and losing weight. And as a result, you'll also find lots of weight loss supplements that contain gymnema. Unfortunately, the research on humans is all but non-existent. And as we know all too well, what works for lab rats does not always work for humans. I wouldn't waste your money on gymnema-based supplements for weight loss. But gymnema has another interesting property, and this is one that you can test yourself. One of the compounds in this herb binds to the taste receptors on your tongue that perceive sweetness. As a result, it makes sweet things taste a lot less sweet. Sweet defeat lozenges coat your tongue with gymnemic acid, rendering you temporarily unable to taste sweetness. The idea is that if sweet stuff doesn't taste good, you won't eat it. And a small placebo-controlled trial in humans seems to bear this out. So the lucky subjects in this study were allowed to select their favorite type of candy and eat a piece of it. After they enjoyed their candy, some of them were given a gymnemic acid lozenge, and others were given a placebo lozenge. And then they were all offered more of their favorite candy. Well, those who got the active lozenge ended up consuming 44% less candy than those who got the placebo. As I said before, I did my own N of 1 experiment, and here's what I found. After lunch one day, I unwrapped a sweet defeat lozenge and popped it in my mouth, and it was slightly sweet and pleasantly minty. But as it dissolved on my tongue, the strangest thing happened. As the gymnemic acid interacted with the taste receptors on the surface of my tongue, the taste of the lozenge changed. It was sort of like watching a color photograph fade to black and white. The sweetness diminished until the lozenge had virtually no flavor whatsoever. Then, to test the effect, I tried eating a few raisins, and I found them weirdly tasteless. It's very odd to experience the texture of foods like raisins without the sweetness. I've always thought that the chewiness of raisins was one of the things I liked about them, but without the reward of the sweet taste, raisins had very little appeal. It was a little like chewing on rubber bands. So I had no desire to continue eating them. The lozenge did not affect my ability to taste other flavors. I could still taste and enjoy the pleasant combination of bitterness and creaminess of my unsweetened iced coffee with milk, for example. But soda, or diet soda for that matter, tasted like slightly sour club soda. Based on my own experience, the results of that study are not surprising. If a treat doesn't taste particularly good, you're less likely to continue eating it. But there was another intriguing finding in this study, and I'll tell you about that after a few words from our sponsors. 
Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. With three mattress models, the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential, Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Not to mention, the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. And it's delivered right to your door in a small, how do they do that, sized box with free shipping and returns in the US and Canada. But the best part is that you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. After all, you spend one third of your life sleeping, you should be comfortable. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash diva and using diva at checkout. That's casper.com slash diva. And the offer code is diva to get $50 off your mattress purchase. Some terms and conditions apply. Our show also received support this week from Third Love. Using thousands of real women's measurements, Third Love designs its bras with size and shape in mind, so they fit impeccably and they feel even better. And now, since adding 24 new sizes, Third Love offers the most options of any brand, a total of 70 sizes. With Third Love's Fit Finder quiz, you can find your fit in 60 seconds online, order, and then try it on at home. And if you have any questions about their styles, the sizing, or your quiz results, you can chat with a representative. In my experience, their customer service is super friendly, but also really knowledgeable, which is what you want. (laughs) Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering you 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash diva now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash diva for 15% off today. Okay, so back to our study. Compared with the placebo group, those who used the active lozenges subsequently ate less candy, but they were also more likely to decide that they didn't want another piece of candy, and that was before they experienced the disappointingly altered taste. It seems that the inability to perceive sweetness doesn't just make it harder to enjoy a treat, it makes you less interested in having it in the first place. It's almost as if the part of your brain that wants something sweet can already tell that this sensation is not available. After finishing the lozenge, sweets were not enjoyable or appealing to me, but in the interest of science, I tried another raisin every 10 or 15 minutes or so just to see how long it would be before they started tasting like raisins again. In my case, the effect of the lozenge lasted about 60 minutes. I certainly wouldn't use these lozenges as my one and only strategy for reducing sugar intake. I still strongly suggest limiting the amount of sweet foods and beverages that you keep in your home, in your car, and to the extent that you can control it in your workplace, out of sight, out of mind. And I also don't think that a product like this replaces the benefits of mindful eating and enjoyment. And I certainly wouldn't recommend this as a way to cope with binge eating. But I can see a couple of situations in which a product like this could be useful. You might intend to enjoy just a few bites of a special dessert. But as many of you know all too well, a small taste of something sweet can bring on a powerful desire for more. Having a few bites and then popping one of these lozenges would definitely make it a lot easier to stop at just a few bites. And you'd want to use that 60-minute window to put some distance, both mentally and physically, between you and the remainder of that dessert. You might also try one of these when a random craving for something sweet strikes you. It might reduce the intensity of that craving. And even if it doesn't, it will take your tongue out of the game for long enough for that craving to pass, because that's the thing about cravings. They tend to be short-lived. Now, if you are actually hungry, you could have a nourishing but non-sweet meal or snack at that point. If you're not really hungry, though, then use that 60 minutes to get yourself deeply engrossed in another engaging and rewarding activity. Although I don't think sweet defeat lozenges are the solution to overeating or obesity, perhaps they can make it just a little bit easier to get ourselves out of bad habits and establish healthier behavior patterns. Have you tried these sweet defeat lozenges for sugar cravings? 
I'd love to hear what you've experienced, or if you have questions about today, you can post them on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com, where you'll also find a complete transcript of today's show, along with links to the research that I mentioned. Or you can always come join the discussion on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. I love to connect with you over there. If you have a question or a product that you'd like me to review for a future Nutrition Diva podcast, send it my way. I'd be happy to take a look at that. And now have a great week and remember to eat something good for me.